This agitated woman was placed in a psychiatric hospital by the police as a protective measure because she did not admit that the son they helped her recover was her son. She wanted to get out, she had to sign and admit that she was wrong, and the police had no problem with that from start to finish. If she signed, she would be cured, but if she didn't, she hadn't recovered. How does an ordinary woman fight all this? The movie right. begins in 1928 California, mm -hmm. a single mother Christine Collins alone with her son Walter Collins, Christine had an appointment to take her son to the movies, a phone call from the company, interrupted her plans. I promised Walter that I'd take him to the movies, just, just until four. Tomorrow, we will go to the movies. I can take care of myself. I'll be home before it gets dark. I love you. She had no choice but to go to the company to work late, leaving her son alone at home. When Christine Walter! got off work, she found that her son was nowhere to be Walter, found. It's time to come in, honey. She had no choice but to ask for help from the police, who thought she might have overplayed her hand and forgotten the time, and the woman said no, my son would be home after dark. The police also said that the police force is limited, not more than 24 hours cannot be accepted, 99% of the missing children will be back before dawn, but the woman said Walter is not such a child. The police are not impressed, they have seen too many such cases. Can only promise her to go over and look again in the morning. In addition, she also insisted on calling the local police departments every day to ask for news of her son, a time, Walter's missing news all over the streets of Los Angeles, but day by day, Christine still did not wait for news of her son, until five months later a phone call from the police department, Walter was found. Christine was full of joy and excitement to the train station, the scene has gathered a lot of reporters, but when she saw the boy who walked down from the train but found that the child is not their son at all, police captain jones but she was too excited as well as five months the child has experienced trials and tribulations have changed forcing her to take the boy back the woman immediately said my son i cannot recognize it but the little boy also said his name was walter and even his home address was clear the boy hugged the heroine who compromised he arranged a grandmother son reunion ceremony at the station and the media have taken pictures of this touching scene when she returned home she found that the language habits of this walter were different from her own sons she helped the boy take a bath behind her and found that he had undergone surgery, and she immediately took him to measure his height and found that he was a few inches shorter than her son. The heroine became emotional, this is not the real Walter. The next day she brought, Walter, to the police station. The woman said the height was wrong, and he said your measurements were wrong. He's not my son. He also said the boy had had surgery and Walter had not. He analyzed that maybe the stranger who adopted the boy was kind enough to give him the surgery. He put the blame on the heroine, believing that she did not want to be responsible for being a mother. I am not running away from anything! The heroine voiced her inner concern that she was just worried that the police were no longer looking for her son. What worries me is that you have stopped looking for my son! Why should we and be looking for someone we've already found? She eased her emotions and felt it was useless to talk about it, so she excused herself and left. After the heroine left, the police started calling for a doctor. The next day, the doctor came to the heroine's home. The doctor felt that she was mentally ill, seeing things paranoid and emotional. In desperation Christine took her son to the dentist. Good night mommy. Uh, I'm not your mother! Who had Walter's visit and was very clear that the boy was not Walter and was willing to issue a certificate for Christine. Then she took the boy to school, where the boy could not remember his teacher, could not find his seat, and the teacher was adamant that the boy was not Walter. Everyone who came in contact with Walter, his teachers, his dentist, all found out the hard way. Then wouldn't a unanimous statement by All Unite to unlock the truth? She was approached by a priest named Gustav, who had been exposing police brutality, and when he learned of Christine's case, he offered to help her. The two decided to use public opinion to put pressure on the police, Christine announced in front of reporters that the recovered boy was not her son, and then the sheriff, to prevent her from colluding with more people to disprove the conclusion, the police took protective measures against her, put in psychiatric hospital. She wanted to get out, she had to sign and admit that she was wrong, and the police had no problem with that from start to finish. If she signed, she was cured, but if she didn't sign, she hadn't recovered. How can an ordinary woman fight all this? This side of Christine in the psychiatric hospital to suffer all kinds of torture. The other side of the agent Lester in handling a smuggling case, smuggling a boy, the boy is about to be extradited back to Canada when confessed to Lester that he had killed under the coercion of Gordon, the two killed nearly 20 children. After the teenager identified the boy who had been abducted by Gordon, there was Walter Collins, who had been missing. There is a detail in the movie. When the police asked the teenager to identify, he found a thick pile of photos of missing children from the corner, about to gather dust. From these photos, the teenager recognized the vast majority of the children. In other words, so many cases of missing children, all point to the same great crime behind the case. But did the police department take it seriously? No. They did not. Lester immediately reported the matter to Captain Jones, but Jones was too anxious about Walter to care about anything else, he told Lester that the boy must have lied in order to be able to continue to stay in the United the States, so Lester did not have to pay attention. But Lester was not completely at ease, he saw with his own eyes that Sanford was trembling deeply because of the memory of the killing scene, he was really in fear, so Lester took Sanford to Gordon's farm before he was extradited back to Canada, and Sanford took a shovel and dug up the bones himself. 
The skeletons of nearly 20 children shocked the whole of Los Angeles, and among those 20 children, there was a good chance that Walter was among them, so the boy who was recovered really wasn't Christine's son, and Gustav led the way to the mental hospital to bring Christine out. Open. You're the doctor who locked up Christine Collins? Read it. Such an oops incident put the LAPD on the spot, and the mental hospital, because 12 were locked and the people were rescued with the help of Christine, these people had been forced into the mental hospital for insisting on self against the police. Think about the bones of those buried on the farm, why so many people have been missing for so long and no one has found them, or even looked for them, where are their families, and who are the people locked up in the asylum because of the 12 bars? Think carefully. So Gordon was able to commit crimes for years without being discovered, was it because he was violent enough to hide well enough, or was no one even looking for these missing children? If Christine hadn't insisted on looking for Walter and it happened that Sanford had a chance to be found, how many more children would have died under Gordon's axe? And who was the boy Jones recovered? He was abandoned in a country tavern by his pauper father, and his mother never showed up. Lawyer Han, who volunteered to defend Christine for free when she decided to sue the authorities. After Kristen is committed to a mental institution, a mother's mouth can be easily muffled. But the public opinion of the people, then, was able to drown out the police department. So after the chicken coop murders came to light, Gordon was arrested for being reported by his sister while hiding at her house. He insisted he was innocent, saying he did not kill Walter, and under the evidence of the accumulated white bones, he was sentenced to hang, Captain Jones was permanently suspended, the police chief was removed, and the mayor did not run in the general election as a result. Along as many as 19 other boys at the Northcott Ranch in Wineville. Is that correct, Captain? Yes, it is. Seems that everything has come to an end, but Walter is still missing. Gordon asked for an interview with Christine before the execution to tell her Walter's whereabouts, but when Christine actually sat across from him, he backtracked. Christine witnessed Gordon's hanging and then, with hope, continued to search for Walter's whereabouts. It wasn't until 1935 that a recovered child brought news of Walter to Christine once again. David, a child who had escaped from the murderous demon Gordon, had been imprisoned with Walter and another boy. They found a loose part of the farm fence and the three escaped in the night, but David got hung up on the fence and Gordon heard the commotion. The three children fled separately, and this was the last time David saw Walter, so he did not know whether Walter was captured back by Gordon, or escaped and scathed. At the end of the film, the mother left a word, hope. What's that? Hope.